back. It's been a while. But I'm pleased to see you all. Starting a little bit late today because, well, we're going to give our applause to all the wonderful workers who are looking after us in this current time of pandemic. And I think they do a great job. Far more valuable than me just sitting at a computer and pushing buttons. But anyway, what we're going to look at today is we're going to continue our series, but we're, we're going to look at gRPC. So in the last episode, what we did was we looked at, at building out a gRPC service. So we built our currency service. And in this episode, we're going to look at how we can integrate that currency service with our API service. So how we can make sort of client-side calls from Go into our currency service. Shall we begin? Let's begin. All righty. Public service announcement. Now, my good buddy Ivan is looking for a new role. And I'm going to put the link down below there. But uh, if you want to hire the best DevOps person, the most knowledgeable person around infrastructure, cloud, and physical infrastructure, and all of the stuff that you could ever find, then you need to be telling your boss, telling yourself, and getting in touch there. But public service announcement over. Let's get on with it. Alrighty. So last time when we left things, we were looking at our code. And what we'd done was we'd built this currency service. So the currency service we declared by writing this proto file. So if you remember back, then protocol buffers are the format by which gRPC uses to exchange data. So you're going to use JSON in a RESTful service. With gRPC, you're using protocol buffers. So to define a service, a gRPC service, you write these protocol files. And what I have here is a definition of a service for currency. And it gets us just the currency rates. So we have a request, sorry, a method called get rate. It has a request parameter of rate request, which is a simple type. You specify two strings, a base currency and a destination currency, and it returns you a message type of rate response. And rate response is just a floating point. So it's going to give you the exchange rate. So for example, if I choose GBP, gosh, gosh, British pounds as my base rate, and I choose euros as my destination rate, it'll probably tell me that the pound isn't worth exchanging and don't even bother. But that's basically how the service works. Now, what we want to do first, before we kind of start looking at our client, is we want to kind of look at just a few extra elements of protocol buffers. Because in addition to being able to do things like specify strings and floating point numbers, you can also specify enumerations. And this is incredibly important in our instance, because our rate request actually can only take certain values, because our currency service is using the, the European Central Bank's exchange rates, and that only supports a certain number of currencies. So let's take a look at, at what they are. Well, what we can do is we can define an enumeration. So to define an enumeration in protobuf, I can use this enum, and I give it a name, currencies, and then I can specify a kind of a string representation and a value. So pretty sort of standard sort of enumeration. If we just quickly take a look at that inside of the protocol buff definitions and in the documentation, and I'll put all the links down below for you, but you can see that you're allowed to do this kind of setup. You're also allowed to kind of set up some, some sort of options, custom options and things like that. But you know, the very sort of basic example, it allows you to constrain the type of data that's coming into your service. So back over to our service and our enumeration. So we're going to have these currencies. So Euro, that's going to be our base currency. But we're going to kind of define the other currencies which are supported by the European Central Bank, which is going to be from their API. 
and I can just paste that in there. So some folks are probably asking, well, can RPC or gRPC completely replace JSON? And, and I think the answer is maybe, maybe the worst answer in the world, huh? But I think you've got to think about the use cases. So one of the things where gRPC is not particularly good at, and it, I would say it's more of an evolving area, is things like front end services. We've been having a, a kind of a chat around that in the, the live chat there just before we, we started the, the stream today. And um, yeah, it's it kind of, uh, I think for backend services, gRPC is really nice. It's, it's very fast, it's very efficient. You've got the capability of doing a unary service. So unary is kind of a straightforward request response but also streaming. You can stream data. Think of it like a web socket in terms of um, sort of HTTP. The proto file, this is your definition because what we want to be able to do is generate our, our code from these files. We don't want to kind of have to hand code or hand craft these objects. We want to create a common interface file, a protocol definition file that multiple different language types can then code generate to create their their actual underlying objects. So we, we, we've added that um, enumeration there. So what we, we need to do, again, if you, you kind of remember, oh, sorry, um, before we do that, is we're just going to replace these types here. So we're not going to use a string anymore. What we can do is we can specify currencies. Right, so we've now got the ability to, to specify an enumeration. So when I send a rate request, if I try to send a value which isn't in my currencies enum, it's going to bounce it. It's not an acceptable request. It won't even hit my server. Right, now then. So let's just um, generate that proto buff. And we're going to use that make protos command that we used uh, set up in the last episode. So we're using proto C and proto C is the, the, the kind of the, the high level tool or the top level tool for, for interacting with protocol buffers, generating them from those proto files. And you give protos, uh, proto C, you can use plugins. So I can also say, hey, use the gRPC plugin and generate me not just the protocol buffers, but also code gen me the gRPC code. Right. So we've just regenerated our code. And if we want to kind of take a look at what that looks like in Go, let's look at currency.pb. So this is the generated file. This is not a file that I'm going to particularly touch. It's just automatically code gen. And you can see that the definition of that enum inside of the proto file is translated through to this, this constant, but also it kind of translates through to this currencies type. And the currencies type has certain things like maps, and you don't necessarily need to directly con concern yourself with those, but it gives you the ability to translate between a currencies type and a prototype. And we'll, we'll kind of see how we can, we can use that. It allows us to construct currencies from strings or from numbers. It's a, it's a very, very useful thing. So let's go into our service. So our service is the implementation of our currency. So again, kind of just gRPC is going to code genus a bunch of things. And what we need to do to be able to satisfy that and to be able to create our gRPC services is we implement the interfaces which are generated for us, so, sorry, in that proto PB file. And that's what's in our server currency.go. And, and I'll put the link there for that video. So please go back and, and kind of have a look through that if, if you've you missed that one. So currency is very simple. We have this RPC service that translate through to go function and the go function has a rate request 
which is a strut. You have the base and the destination, which are of type currency. And we're going to send a response. And the response is a very simple floating point number. And we've, we've just kind of hard coded this information for, for now. What we want to be able to do is we want to be able to call this service. And I want to be able to call it from my products API because my products API is going to have currency as an upstream dependency. It's going to allow me to do things like conversion of the currency. I'm going to be able to specify the return of a, a product and have the price automatically converted for me. So in order to do that, what I need to be able to do is I need to be able to construct a client which allows me to call the currency service. So how do I do that? Well, there's a, there's a kind of a number of different ways to do it. But what, what we kind of really need to do is we kind of have to just use that proto file and we're just going to use the clients that's generated automatically for us. And that should, when I say should, it should be fairly straightforward. It might be straightforward. Let's hope it's straightforward. We can test it anyway. All right. So first things first. So we need to create a currency client. So let's, um, let's dig into that. So the currency client in gRPC is defined in that auto-generated file, currency.pb.go. And you see it up the top here, somewhere, a little bit further down. There we go. So we're defining the rate requests. And oh, where are we? Currency client. It's an interface. So the interface has a method, go method, get rate, takes a context. So everything um, in terms of a gRPC client call will have a context that allows you to do things like timeouts and cancel and stuff. Also be able to pass additional metadata across. And you can specify things like the rate request object and also these gRPC call options. So we'll, we'll take a look at those in a second. And that's going to return us a rate response object or an error. So we create a currency client using the new currency client method on the proto. Now, the, the, the kind of the, one of the real benefits or one of the things that I really like about protocol buffers, and we'll, we'll kind of, I think, see this more when it comes to testing, is the ability that we can actually we've got clients sort of as interfaces here so it's just going to make it really easy for us to to be able to write some tests and do some stuff like that and um i'm going to be excited to to kind of show you show you this stuff when we, we kind of get round to doing this but for now what i want to do is i want to kind of define that um, proto for you so we're going back over to our main.go and let's just create our currency client here and then we can pass it into our handler. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reference that code generated file currency, which is this one here. And I'm just giving it the, whoops, oh, darn you. It removed it because I haven't referenced, used it yet. I'm just going to use this. All right. So let's um, create a new instance of our client. So create client. And we're going to use protos, protos dot new currency client. So this takes a gRPC client connection interface. Okay, so what is what is this all about? Well, what we need to be able to do is we need to kind of connect to a particular service. So in order to connect to a service, what we're going to do is we're going to instantiate a gRPC client connection, and we're going to pass it to our currency client. So just bouncing over to the gRPC docs here, 
we can kind of look down here and these, these documentation from the GRPC IO is incredible, really, really good. But, um, you know, let's have a look at this. So connection error, GRPC dial, this is what's creating that, that connection. Okay. And then we're going to, we obviously need to close a connection now. Has anybody kind of seen this pattern before? Well, what about, um, net connection? Let's have a, let's see if we can have a find, find of that there. But, um, oh, I'm zooming that the wrong way. Look at this. We've got net.dial. And this is a kind of the way that you would create a, um, just a standard TCP connection. If you look across here at the JRPC, pretty much exactly the same. Very, very simple pattern, straightforward. I like that. GRPC people are good people. They're playing on the fact that Nick doesn't have a great memory. But we need to define that connection. So let's define it. So we're going to define it. We're going to say grpc.dial. And grpc dial, what does that take? Well, grpc dial is going to require us to specify an address. Now, we've got our server running here. And it's just running on localhost at, well, at a, at a port that I can't remember, I think 1992. So let's just define that localhost 1992, uh, not there, here. Okay, localhost 1992. And well, I'm just gonna panic if I get an error because I'll clean that up later because I want to go through kind of get you going with this, but then we're going to look at actually doing some big refactoring in this service, which I think you'll find, well, I hope you'll find useful. I always find refactoring some of the most insightful code that I ever write. But when I've got the client, what I do is I pass that client to my connection. Okay. And this returns me protos.currency client, and that's an interface. So I'm just going to call this currency client. Now, now I've got my currency client. I'm going to do what I want to do with this. So what I want to do with my currency client is I want to be able to use the, the kind of the, the currency conversion every time I call one of these, these API endpoints. So for the moment, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of, well, let's, uh, let's think where's a good place to put it. I think what we'll do is we'll, we'll just, oh, we want to get rid of that. Defer, oops. I think what we'll do is we'll just put it here. We'll just create it up here and we're just going to pass it through to the handler and we'll, we'll kind of refactor that in a minute. I just want to kind of get this thing going so we can see how it's used. So new products, that's going to create us a new product. I'm going to be proactive because I know fine well it isn't going to find the import on that. So I better do it myself. And then in my new products, I'm going to specify CC, which is my proto protos dot currency client. And there we go. Okay. So now Again, on, on our product handler, we're, we're doing this kind of constructor style injection, which might feel kind of like weird at the moment, but honestly, it will be 100% apparent once we start getting to testing why I'm following this pattern. It keeps things right, nice and clean, nice and tidy, it keeps um, all of the sort of the, the dependencies isolated, and that's always a good thing. So we've got new products and We've now got our uh, currency client, which we can use from new product. So if we take a look at our list single method, then what we do with list single is we're going to get the product from the, the data, the data layer. Now, what I want to do with this product though is I want to be able to change the exchange rate on it. So 
let's just get the exchange rate. So get exchange rate. And we're going to cut some corners here. For the moment, we're going to come back and we're going to refactor this. What is our, how do we get our exchange rate? Well, anybody remember that we defined a currency service? Because we sure did. And currency service, we actually have a currency client called CC. CC has a method called get rate. It takes a context. I'm not going to kind of do anything fancy with a context. So I'm just going to pass a standard background. And it specifies that I need a rate request. So let's create a rate request. Protos rate request. Right. And yep, let me just import that. Okay. So we need to construct our rate request. Our rate request is going to define what our base currency is, and it's going to allow us to do a conversion into another currency. So base currency. Now, if you remember, our base currency is type, uh, is an enum of type currency. So protos dot currencies is an enum. Whoops. Gosh. It's going to bounce it over here. Is a type. It's in 32, but we need to be able to construct that from a string. So in order to construct it from a string, what we can do is either use these maps here to do the conversion or something like that. Well, I think we'll just use the map, right? So the, the kind of the easiest way to do that though is we're just going to construct, we're going to say protos dot currencies because it has to be of type currency. So we can, we can do it like this and then we can just wrap the integer value which we can get from that map. So we can say protos dot currency currencies value, and it's a map. So let's say Europe, Europe, the Euro, Euro, I get that right, Jackson. And what we also need is the destination currency. And the destination currency, we're going to set up in exactly the same way. So protos dot currencies. Protos.currency value and let's say GBP like that. Okay. So now we've constructed our rate request, which is a property here. So just recapping there very quickly. So we are going to call the get rate method, which is on our currency client. Our currency client has been automatically generated for us because we are using a gRPC framework in Go and we set out that in our currency proto. Currency proto when generated creates this currency.pb. So it's all that co genered stuff. So we constructed a new currency client using the address of the service and creating a gRPC connection. And we've set that up and we're using it here. So we're going to call get rate and this is going to return us a rate request, uh, sorry, a rate response. So we can say resp and error is going to be like this. So we're going to say if error is not equal to nil. And I'm going to do a special episode purely and simply on gRPC errors because gRPC errors 
are slightly different. gRPC runs over HTTP2, but you are not going to be dealing with HTTP error codes like 200, 501 in the same way. So we need to kind of think slightly different. But um, if we get that, we're just going to do pre.l.print line, and we're going to specify error, and we're going to have all the regrets that I didn't use a structured error logger in the beginning of this, and all of the refactoring to do when it comes down to it. Error getting new rate, and then let's just get the error. And um, we need to return an error message because we're taking that RESTful approach. So I'm just going to return a generic error. Okay, and then we've got this like so. Now, what we we can do now that it was successful is we've got that response. And the response has the rate, which is going to be our conversion number. So we can take our product and we can get the price of our product and we're going to set the price of our product to the price of our product times our rate. Because this is going to give us a ratio. So for example, if um, the base currency is euro and we want to convert into GBP, there's, I don't know, something like 1.1 um, 1 .1 euros for every pound. So that will get the rate here will be a value of 1.1. So what we're going to do here is we're mutating that. We're just saying, give us our price, which is in our base of euros. And we're just going to return the new price, which is the old one times the currency exchange. And that should work. If you say a dozen Hail Marys or whatever deity that you believe in, because we're going to need the help. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're in. We're doing good. We're getting there. I just missed one last thing. So one hurdle over. Go mod. Love you. Next thing. Main.go. So new currency client. We've got a line, line 33, because we are creating a, a dial. Now, dial also takes options. So I'm, my bad here, we're missing an option. So by default, gRPC is going to use HTTP2. HTTP2 is actually going to, by preference, wants to use HTTPS. Now, with, um, with Go, there is a kind of, there's a patch on HTTP2 that means you can use it without HTTPS. I would always recommend using secure transport in your services, but we don't need to worry about that now. What we can do is we can use these um, special gRPC options and we can use gRPC with insecure. So what this is going to do is this is an option which says, don't worry about any client or server-side certificates, you're all good as plain text. Again, not something for production, fine for our local. So we have our products API running. So let's create a new one of these. And we're going to do curl, localhost, and 1990. And what was the URI again? It's products. And the name of the product, so we're going to get single. Curl, get product, one. So you can see there that we've got our product and the price is uh, one pound, well, one, because we're using GBP, we're using a conversion, one, two, two, five. Let's just quickly go back to our get service there. And I'm just going to comment out that line. and We'll, we'll kind of, uh, I just want to show this is working. So we've got that running again, and we're going to, I killed the wrong service. Currency. Rerun our API, 69. 
run that there, rerun our curl, and you can see £2.45. And that's because the rate, which is coming back from the currency service, well, we hard-coded it to be five. So just putting, putting that all back in there, resp, that line. And I'll, um, let me just log that out so you can see what the, the object actually looks like. Um, L dot print F. I'm just going to do um, resp and I'm going to do, uh, where's my percentage? Percentage hash V and resp. And just change that back up here. And let's see if I can remember to kill the right service there. But you can see there also in the log that we've got that handle request. Let's rerun. Okay, we've got our service running again. Curling our service, this time 125 because it's that rate of 50. We've just got hard coded. You can see that the currency service there is, um, is all working. And you can see the object that was returned from the gRPC service, such as rate response, and you can see all of that, that kind of that object structure just kind of put out. But that's kind of the very basics of starting to use a, a gRPC client. I'm going to start to, I think in the next episode going through, and I want to show you some, maybe let's do something a little different. Let's go and refactor our code a little bit. Let's tidy it up and let's implement a proper rate service. Let's go and fetch some data from the European Central Bank and we'll get some proper rates and we'll build up ourselves a proper object with real data and we'll add some nice endpoints which allow us to, to kind of specify the, the currency using those RESTful principles. So we're going to create our currency. We're going to be able to do our curls. When we do our curl this time, we're going to be able to say currency and say GBP. So we'll be able to allow our users to specify which currency that they want the response in. And we're going to go through and we're just going to go through and tidy that up. And I think it'll be fun. I hope you've been enjoying the, the kind of the, the show today. And well, it's a little bit kind of back to normal. As normal as normal is at the moment but i want to thank you for watching i want to say to you if you do like the content and you're liking things please like and subscribe it really really helps the, the channel um until next time i will bid you goodbye <laughs>